Hey, it's Dan, and welcome to Unified Gaming. So in this one, I want to share with you the bow gank, the one bar version. This is a PvP sniper like no other. It has crazy damage because of the sets we use, awesome sustain because of the skills, great speed, and it does embrace scribing, but there are non-scribed options too, so it covers all bases. This is a really fun build to use and it is an O console version so you can use this if you're new in PvP and still do really, really well. If you want to see gameplay for this, I do have gameplay coming to the channel so I suggest that you do subscribe but in this one I'm going to focus more on the build itself so that gameplay will be in a separate video. As always, if you like my videos and you want to support and get early access and exclusive content and much more, I do have a Patreon, there's details down below. As for the build, what are we doing? Race wise, we go as a Khajiit. A Khajiit will give you access to Feline Ambush, which is 12% critical damage. This is really nice and it's just good burst. The other two are just max resource and some recovery. If you're not a Khajiit, a Dark Elf is my second choice. And in all honesty, they're both really, really good. If you're one or the other, I wouldn't change. It will work absolutely fine. Me personally, I go to Khajiit simply because I use this character as a melee build as well from time to time, so I don't have to race change. If you're not a Khajiit or a Dark Elf, then I would suggest going with something like a High Elf or going with something like an Orc. A Wood Elf just does not have enough damage in my opinion, and so it's probably something I'd skip on if I was you. As for the attributes, I have 16 in Magicka, 32 in Health, and 16 in Stamina. We aim for at least 28,000 health, but this could go higher to 30,000 if you wish. And you'll find that your damage doesn't scale particularly well with stamina. So having a lower stamina pool doesn't actually matter with damage wise. Our damage comes from the high penetration, which goes higher from behind. And also that really good amount of weapon and spell damage. And we have a really, really high amount of spell and fit weapon critical damage. So it is going to be really, really good. If you're not one of those races, as I mentioned earlier, you could obviously just change these attributes as you see fit or change a few glyphs. For the Mundus Stone, I use the Lover Mundus. I found that this is the most consistent when compared to the Shadow. The Shadow will give you slightly higher burst, but if you don't crit, you get less damage than the Lover. So the Lover, in my opinion, is the most consistent and is what I would recommend using at all times. For the Consumer Balls, you have a choice of food for this one. If you want to have more sustain in no CP battlegrounds, something like Jewels of Misrule, which is max health and regens, or Smoked Bear Haunch, is like your go to. That extra sustain is nice. If you want to maximize your damage, Pack Leader's Broth is amazing. It's loads of health, loads of stamina. The damage increase isn't huge, but it is more damage still. You want to go for a bit of a middle ground and have more Magicka to cloak, but with Sugar Skulls is also a great option too. So you can change the food based on what you need. If you're in no CP, Jewels and Mistral is really good. If you're in CP, you could go between Sugar Skulls or Pack Leaders and go with what you see fit or just keep the sustain. Potion wise, I use Tri Potions. They cover all bases and are like the go-to. Health, Magic, or Stamina. If something goes wrong, you're covered here. That said, you could use the Tech Potions for other Night Blades or you could use more specialized potions like Essence for Movability as you see fit. I don't use poisons on this one, but that is an option which we'll touch upon later. I want to go through the skills now and show you the different options we have and also the scribe skill in our build. So for the skills, we have lethal arrow. This is our snipe skill and this does go up to about 10,000 tooltip fully buffed. So this is really nice. We have silver bolts. We then have shadowy disguise and siphoning attacks. The siphoning attacks is our sustain skill. So we can use this to just reset our resources. It's great. Our shadowy disguises go invisible, get crit chance, really good, guaranteed crit from stealth. And our heal is healing soul. This is a scribed skill that is really, really good. It is a burst skill that gives you magic and stamina back, so it's really cheap. And it also gives you major vitality. When we compare this to the Nightblade's version, which is healthy offering, you could use shrewd offering, which is a bit cheaper health. This is 12,000. Now that 12,000 heal, Yes, it's slightly higher, but that major vitality is going to make this even better. You also find this is 4,900, but it's now 3,900 with the obviously cost reduction from here. This is 3,700, so they're very, very similar. 
The difference is that this will give you some stamina back as well. So this is the better one in my opinion. And you don't have to mess around with that health cost. So I would personally go with healing cell if you can. But if you don't have access to that, then use healthy offering. And I would probably morph this to shrewd offering because that's slightly cheaper and you get the minor mending already on oak and soul. So shrewd offering would be the go-to burst deal. Failing that, if you want a bit more resistance, which I do use from time to time, you could go down to Assault and use Resolve and Vigor. It's an 18,000 to heal over 5 seconds, it's amazingly good. You just need to be mindful that you have to actually do it 2 times to actually get the healing that you need. And you won't be able to get that big burst or if you get an Olno button. Like that, you can do the Olno with a burst or you can't do that with this. You have to roll dodge cloak and let the Vigor keep you alive. But the heal wise, I personally would go with the Soul Magic one. Go with Healing Soul, I think it's the best heal that you'll get currently on the class. For the ultimate, we use Incapacitate and Strike. Now you're probably going, why do we use a melee ultimate on a range build? And that is a very, very good question. Um, the answer is this. You've got a passive called Hemorrhage. Hemorrhage increases your critical damage, done, by 10%, but you must have an assassination ability slotted. You also get minor sav savagery as well, so that gives us more crit chance. What this actually means is that in order to get this 10% boost, we either slot Incapacitate and Strike or Merciless Resolve. The other skills aren't helpful. So if we wanted to change our ultimate to the Bow Ultimate, which is really, really good, the issue is we now lose this 10% critical damage, which is quite noticeable. So you could drop the Sustain if you want and then go with this skill here. You then don't have the Sustain option from Siphon and Strikes. So I would personally say that if you're going to do this, maybe drop Silver Bolts. And then that way you still have the sustain. And then you can choose between, do I go with Lethal Arrow, which is minor defile and at longer range, but there's a channel. Or do I go with Fighter Skilled Silver Bolts, which is slightly less damage, but it's instant cast. And if they are a vampire, you do bonus damage to them. 10% if they're not human, if, if they are human, 20%. So 20% bonus damage if they're a human vampire. So in PvP, this could be 20% more in most targets. So this could be a really good skill loadout too. One thing to note as well with this is that we are a vampire ourselves. Vampire is a must on this build. You need access to this Dark Stalker passive to make us move quick and sneak. Strike from the shadow to get bonus damage. And Undeath makes us tanky. Without this, we are quite squishy. So in my opinion, vampirism is a necessity on this build. And just a quick kind of bit of housekeeping. If you don't get it yet, do get it now. Having medicinal use in alchemy is really, really helpful. That extra 30% on the regen buffs is very noticeable. So if you can get this to 50, it doesn't take long. It will really help you out. As for Undaunted as well, we have f um, six medium, one heavy. So we only get um, 4%. That's still better damage than just going to try and get an extra light armor in there. It's just not worth it. And that's kind of the skills. One thing to note that as you play around with these options, the Siphon and Attacks is really potent because of its um, scaling. So when we cast this, and we get rid of all our resources, we can convert our resources into Magicka. So we turn our health into Magicka really quick, as you'll see. And our Magicka's max already. What you can do is you can alternate this with Cloak. So you go for Siphon Strikes, Cloak, Siphon and Strikes, Cloak, Siphon and Strikes, Cloak, Siphon and Strikes, Cloak, Siphon and Strikes, Cloak. As you'll see, that magic never drops. So we can see at 100% magic by doing this, and it means we can stay in Cloak forever. All you do every now and again is throw out your heal. So as you do this, you can throw out your heal. So what I'd suggest doing is doing heal, Cloak, Siphoning, Siphoning, heal, heal, Cloak, Siphoning, Siphoning, Heal, Cloak, Siphoning, Siphoning, Heal, Cloak, Siphoning. You get the idea, yeah? So that's how you use that skill and that sustain you get is ridiculously good. I also want to touch upon one last thing is if you can get your logo domain, it will make a big difference with sneak cost. It's 40% reduction, which is crazy, crazy good. For the champion points, I use Fight and Finesse. It's crit damage, 
Master Arms is just single target damage, Deadly Aim is direct damage which is all our skills, and Backstab which again is crit damage. This is the maximum amount of damage on CP you can get. If for some reason you find it hard to get behind the target, you could swap Backstabber out and go for Wrathful Strikes. You get less damage but it's more consistent if you can't get behind them, so this is also a good option. For the red ones, Pain's Refuge, Survival Instincts, Celerity and Bastion. Bastion if you fight a lot of sorcerers in your server, if you don't have many sorcerers you can swap this for Sustained by Suffering, or you could swap Survival Instincts for Sustained by Suffering and go around with it as you see fit. I would personally keep the Celerity because it is really nice, being evasive it helps keep you alive. And for the green ones, we have Sustaining Shadows and Steed's Blessing. The other ones are up to you. I'm quickly going to reset the skills just as I like. So in my opinion, I'd recommend using Lethal Arrow. This is the better morph. And then you'll then want to go to your Fight skill and use Silver Bolt with your Healing Soul and then Incapacitate and Alt. You might notice that Silver Bolt is not morphed as well. Um, that's simply because our CP buffs single target damage. And by morphing this, we actually get less damage because it's now an AOE skill. So keeping this as the base morph is better. However, if you're playing Battlegrounds only or no CP, then you can morph this and have no issues. The final thing is to go through the sets. But before I do that, if you like my videos, likes, comments, shares, and subscribe really, really helps. It helps out the channel more than you realize. And I also have loads of gameplay on the way, so I would suggest subscribing. And I want to say a massive thanks to everyone at Patreon who helped make the videos possible. If you want to support myself there on YouTube, I have early access and so on. There's details down below. For the sets, we are using Way of the Fire. Way of the Fire is a staple sniper set. It's one of these sets that because you open up with a weapon skill, this will proc instantly and crit. And then when you do your follow-up damage on light attacks, this can proc again within the three second window. So you end up getting two procs in that burst combo, which makes this one of the best proc damage sets you get. I use a sharpened bow with an A and it's got an oblivion damage glyph. If you want to use double dot poisons because you have tankier people, double dot poisons can work better against people with higher health pools. However, the issue you do have is that it doesn't always proc. So poisons are slightly more damaged than a glyph in all honesty, but it doesn't always proc when you need it to. So I find the glyphs more consistent, but you can play around with it. I kind of go between the two. If you don't want to use an Oblivion Glyph because people have really low health, you could use a Shock Glyph as an alternative. For the helmet, we then use One Piece Penetration. So something like Valken Scory or Krog is like best in slot. And we have Divines on all of the body pieces. Medium helmet, light armor, uh, medium on all the other pieces apart from the chest. The chest is Way of the Fire. And the other set we use is Tarnished Nightmare. When you deal critical damage, glass shards burst 8 meters around them and it does damage and it hits Sordid, which is minor breach so we get extra penetration. This is why we don't use focus aim but lethal arrow because of this set. In order to load this out we have bow of fire on the weapon, way of the fire on the chest, and we use way of the fire necklace and ring. I then round this off with oaken soul. All of the glyphs on the jewelry are weapon damage. And I've gone with one infused and two swift. As for the body pieces, I've gone with health on the chest and just stamina on the rest. But if you can avoid the tri stack glyphs, the prismatic, then put them on, they are better. They just cost an awful lot. Please note as well that all the money on here, this is recorded on PTS. I play on PCEU and I don't have this much money, honestly. So that's why this is so obscene up here. You might be asking yourself, why do I have two swift? I found with this build that more often than not, the bonus damage you get from going with infused isn't worth it. So if I show you the tooltip quickly out of stealth. So our snipe tooltip is 9,300. Now if we go and infuse our jewelry, so 9,300, yes, we get more damage, which is nice on the tooltip. So same conditions, vampire passive spot is 9,500. It's 200 extra damage on the tooltip. That isn't going to make a big difference between getting a kill or not. And so I found personally having at least two swift was better. 
this was more noticeable and helped because I can actually move around without you know being punished and with having such limited bar space you can't really afford a movement skill so we have to really rely on that roll dodge speed and that swift that 14% is really noticeable so I would recommend going with at least two swift if not three because you don't lose much damage but you do gain a lot of movement speed and that in turn is more survival but that there guys is the build there is very few scribe skills on this because they don't add anything but if you want to add them healing soul is the best one in my opinion and everything else is as shown any questions let me know down below and if you want to stay up to date with the gameplay and so on i would suggest subscribing but i'm going to call it here i'm going to say a massive thanks to everyone at patreon if you want to support and get early access and so on there's details down below i'll catch you in the next video on the next stream so thanks for watching guys take care and bye.